All right, gentlemen, how you doing? All right, everyone, thank you for joining on today. We're gonna open up to questions. Uh, Charles Grievous, go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Coach Charles Grievous here with GoBlackNice.com. How are you doing today? Great, Charles, thank you. Um, in your initial uh, spring press conference, you talked about the coaching changes that had taken place and you, uh, you're you almost halfway through um, the halfway point, I guess, of spring practice session. Can you talk a little bit about uh, how the new members of the staff have transitioned and conversely, even how the players have adapted to perhaps a new style with their um, respective position coaches? I think it's going really well. I mean, the thing about our players is I think they're accustomed to that here at, at uh, as, uh, as students. I mean, every semester they've got different professors. They walk into classrooms and have to adapt to new teaching styles and, and, uh, and different ways of communicating with, with professors and, and leaders. So I think they're, they're very adaptable and our, our players are handling it really well. Um, I really like the staff. I feel as good about where our staff is right now as I've had, as, as I have in a long time. I mean, it's just a great group of professionals, uh, a very experienced staff. And so I, I think they're all really good fits for, who we are as a program and, and good for our players. So it's going well, obviously only six days in. So there, there's a learning curve. There's a learning curve more for the new coaches than there is for the players. Uh, schemes haven't changed. Just these new coaches learning those schemes and being able to, to coach the, the little details and the fundamentals that go along with it. Um, you know, that takes some time, but they're, 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 they're good professional people and you're going to do a really good job great and, and and by the way this question just won't go away but remember i'm just a messenger here uh you know that being said can you bring us up to date when it comes to uh, the quarterback situation meaning maybe the allocation of reps uh if anyone is separating himself from the group etc I'm, I'm really happy with tire tyler uh when, when a guy has experience in any position it's going to be a lot harder to beat that guy out. And he's got the most experience and uh, he's doing really well. He's really throwing the ball well. Um, and just his ability to be a runner, I think is, is, uh, it's kind of got him at least at the top right now. Kate Ballard is having a really good camp and Jamel Jones is too. Those three guys are all veterans all going into their final season. And uh, it's nice to have some, some veteran guys like that. All of them have played. Uh, each of them has started games. And then in the group behind them, we're really trying to sort out how that's going to, how that's going to shake out. We've got uh, Bryson Daly, uh, who was on the scout team all last year, Alon Mitchell, who was there with him on the scout team. And they've, they've probably been getting equal number of reps. Um, and the game's going a little fast for them. It's a little easier to run off of a card but they both also played in the prep school program. So they've got some experience doing it. It's just kind of getting back in the groove of, of uh, being an option quarterback in our system. And then uh, we got a young man named Alex Meredith, who we had recruited uh, in the same class, uh, I guess a class ahead of Bryson Daly and, and Alon went to our prep school and, and, uh, and then decided he was going to step away from football. And he came back this spring and, and uh, wanted to give it another try. He was a really good high school quarterback. He's a good athlete. So we've got him out there and he's, he's playing catch up, but that's uh, that kind of rounds out the whole position. Thanks coach. Yep. Thank you, Charles. Uh, hi coach. This is Tom Shanahan. How are you doing? Well, Tom, thank you. Hey, I've got a little bit uh, different question for you, but it, uh, it's right in your wheelhouse, which is why I want to get a quote from you. Uh, I'm finishing up my second book on uh, how Michigan State coach Duffy Doherty and his teams led the integration of college football. And one of the things the players have told me is Duffy never really talked about it. It, it was just a good circumstance where it all worked out with the Spartans. They set an example for the rest of the country. Uh, but nowadays, it's a little bit different. Race is something that teams need to talk about. Because uh, more things happen with George Floyd, I know a lot of your guys uh, talked, got together uh, during the pandemic, and talked about George Floyd. As I understand it, from talking to players, once you realized what they were doing, 
to kind of put it into the structure of the program for the kids to, you know, talk things out and be aware of what's going on in the world. And uh, just so I just kind of want to get a quote from you about how times are different and it's something that coach has to be aware of now. I, I hope that, that that's something that I've always tried to be aware of. I haven't, uh, I haven't given the teams that I've coached enough of a platform to have those discussions in the past. And I'm, I'm a little ashamed and embarrassed that I didn't do that because they deserve that and, uh, and we need that. And so that didn't just happen during the pandemic. That's, been, that's just become a part of the culture of our program. And our guys are very open and we, we, we continue to have conversations about how we can develop a better team, stronger bonds across racial lines and religious lines and political lines. And we had guys come from every walk of life and they all have uh, different thoughts and ideas and values. And, and, uh, and so sharing those and be able to talk through those are, are really important to our program. And uh, and it's, it's that's led by our players. They do a they do a great job with that, and I'm I'm really proud of the efforts that those guys put into that uh, really on a daily basis. And and we 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 encourage it, and uh, and we we try to push those along. But we've continued to have people that can come in and talk to our team about those things, and and uh, and talk about the importance of of just including everyone. And, and I, I, that's what's great about a team, and especially a football team. And there are all kinds of different jobs and different skill sets and guys of different sizes. And, and, uh, and there's a huge difference between a, an offensive lineman and a kicker and a wide receiver and a linebacker and a quarterback and a, and a safety. And you know, there, we have guys with all kinds of different skill sets and bring different things to to the organization and and uh, and just being able to realize the importance of each one of those is is uh, is important to team building. You know, Duffy Doherty was uh, he was he was way ahead of his time, and when when he was building his team at Michigan State, he had a very diverse football team, racially diverse. Uh, I, I worked with in 1989 when I went to the University of Hawaii. There was the strength coach there was Kali Ane. And, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Cully, sure. Cully was a great guy. He played for Duffy there. And uh, he talked about those great teams and just how guys came from all over the country and, and just really felt at home there. And so, you know, I, I it, really, uh, really fantastic to, uh, to, to have a guy like that, that worked in our profession that, that really paved the way for, for everybody else and, and really a model that we can still follow today. Okay, great. I knew you'd have a good answer. Um, I'm going to have a chat. I always try to give you a good answer, Tom. Hey, huh? you know what? I always try to give you a good answer. And if I can't <laughs> dazzle you with brilliance, I'll baffle you with BS. <laughs> I'm going to have a, a chapter on Gary Steele in here. It's a good one. And uh, I don't know where, where you stand on uh, the USC and Sam Cunningham myths and fiction, but that's part of my goal in the book, too, is uh, – it's been an injustice to the true pioneers, not just Duffy and his players, but the guys like Jerry Levias that were the first black players in the South. And that's what I'm hoping this book brings to light. Well, I, I, uh, I applaud your efforts. I'll be looking forward to, to reading that. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm guilty of not knowing all that history. So that's why we got guys like you to share the history with us. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Nobody does. Uh, and it's because the media didn't write about it in the sixties. They avoided race. Yeah. So well, I'm glad we're, I'm glad we're not avoiding it anymore. They had a blank canvas. I'm glad we're not avoiding it anymore. Right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Uh, Ken, Ken Kreitzer. Hey, good afternoon, Coach. Ken Kreitzer, SAL Radio. Hey, just get back to uh, the quarterbacks for a second. I had a chance to watch them. They all look good on Saturday in the scrimmage. Uh, but I thought Bryson Daly both and Avon Mitchell both had uh, – had long touchdown passes in the scrimmage. Uh, how do you see them? Uh, have their uh, games improving? Oh, they're coming along. They're they're behind those other guys, which is to be expected. They don't have near as much experience. Um, they they spend the entire uh, 
scout team season for the most part, with the exception of a couple of games, taking shotgun snaps. So just taking a snap is a, is an adventure right now for those two guys. That they're, it seems like about two out of every three snaps are on the ground. It may not be that high of a percentage, but it's frustrating to see that. So we got to get that cleaned up before we can we can get everything else going. And and they're 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 both playing a little bit apprehensive, um, but that comes with with playing and uh, the confidence that's built through through experience. So I'm anxious to to see them play this Saturday and see if they they look better than they did last week, and then the following Saturday and in the spring game and and uh, really see those guys come along. I, 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 I'm really happy with both of them athletically. Uh, they're different. Bryson's a big, strong, tough runner. They both throw the ball well. Alon's a lot quicker, uh, just a, a, a smaller, quicker athlete, but both can play quarterback in this offense. And so I'm excited to see them and how they develop this spring. Coach, we talked to Connor Bishop. Uh... Uh, last week, uh, uh, he's certainly working on uh, on strength and conditioning in the off season. Uh, and uh, how do you see the offensive line shaping up? Do you do you want to have pretty much have your line together by the end of spring practice? I just hope we've got a healthy team, uh, a health a healthy offensive line, and that we're able to to build some depth. You know, that's the thing. You you followed us for a good while, Ken and keeping an offensive line healthy in this offense is, is a real challenge. So we're going to try to keep those guys healthy, develop as many of them as we can. We got a lot of new faces, some guys that have been tight ends and moved to tackle and, and uh, some young guys that we're trying to bring along. So, you know, we, that, that's all I'm hoping for. I don't, I don't, I don't think we'll know who our starting five are going to be, or you know, be able to get a lot of work with the starting five through the spring. We're, we're trying to limit Connor Bishop. He's had, uh, you know, he's just had a, a body that's been beat up over the course of his career. He's going into his senior season. He's played enough football to know what to do. And uh, we're confident that if we get him healthy, he's going to be a player that's really going to help us. So uh, there's some other guys getting getting the snaps at center, and and which is great. We get to bring those guys along. And uh, so – that 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 really is it, Ken. Not not uh, being settled on a on a particular front five, just a, a group of guys that we know we can count on. Hey, just saying on offense, one more question: uh, uh, How do you see Tyrell Robinson doing uh, this spring? And you've moved a couple of players from other positions: uh, Maurice Beller from quarterback and uh, Cole uh, Catterbone from a wide receiver into slot back. How do you how do you see that working? Tyrell's having a good spring. He's a he's a really good player, very talented and productive, and and uh, he's 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 doing a good job. I'm, it's fun to, to see him out there when he's got the ball in his hands and just everything he does, running a route, blocking people. Um, he's doing a really good job. Maurice has been a a great surprise there. He's 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 more physical than we maybe anticipated he would be right off the. Uh, right off the bat, he, he is uh, not shy at all about blocking and making contact. And he's a good, quick athlete. He's definitely going to help us at slot back. And, and we cro we're cross-training Cole Caterbone. So he is playing both slot and receiver. And we anticipate that he'll probably uh, be able to do that throughout the season. I think it just gives us a chance to, to get him in the game more, get him more involved. And uh, he's, uh, he's a really good football player, tough and physical and so I think his body, his body style and uh, his skill set uh, will allow him to play both. And uh, it's not often you have a guy like that, but it, he's, he's the perfect candidate. Hey, just one question on defense. Uh, uh, with Scott Sloan coming in as co-defensive coordinator, also working at safeties, uh, what, what, how do you see his role? And uh, what are some of the uh, new ideas that he brings into the defense? He's going to be... Uh, very much like Shield Wood was, uh, uh, a right-hand man to, to Coach Woody. They've worked together before. They worked at Appalachian State side-by-side uh, -side in the same roles. And, and uh, you know, it, it, Scott's an outstanding football coach. He's a tremendous recruiter. And, uh, and he's, he, he knows the defense, knows the terminology. Uh, for him, much less of a learning curve 
than most of the other new coaches because he knew the system and and uh, he's been a coordinator at Georgia Southern the last four years and done a tremendous job for them. Thanks, Coach. Uh, Kenny Millen. <clears throat> Hi, Jeff. Um, just to go back on Cole Catterbone, um, the you know he's as a receiver he's kind of playing more of a, a vertical role, but now he's kind of getting into a bit of a horizontal at the line of scrimmage. Uh, is that a tough transition to make? Well, you you watched enough of us to know that our our receivers aren't uh, running a bunch of vertical stuff. They're they're we we align them in the box, and oftentimes we've got eleven guys that are inside the hashes, so they're involved in the blocking, uh, blocking defensive ends, blocking linebackers, blocking safeties and corners. They're very much involved in the run game and have to be physical players. So I don't I don't know that really uh, from a physical standpoint, what we're asking them to do in the blocking schemes uh, at, at receiver are different uh, so much from slot. Obviously the being the pitch back and some of the routes and, and, and really having good comprehension of, of the entire passing game and the entire offense probably comes more with playing slot back. Um, the, the, the farther you get away from the ball, um, it, you become more of a of a player that's on an island, and it's much much less so the closer you get to the ball. So those guys that play slot have to have a little bit more of a of an intimate understanding of this of the count system and what the linemen are doing, and and uh, so I think it's really it's been good for him. He's enjoyed that. I think just just learning more about the offense, and uh, as I said. He's not, uh, he's not like most of those receivers. Most of those receivers wouldn't be a guy you'd put a slot back. I can't see putting uh, you know, Isaiah Alston or Ryan Jakovic at slot back. Uh, they're, they're a fit where they are. But, you know, he, he, can, he can play receiver. And there's probably some slot backs that could go play receiver. Like, you know, oh, I don't know, in a pinch, if you had to, put Ajahn Marshall out there or a guy like that. They could probably play receiver, but you're not probably going to put uh, T Rob or, or Maurice Ballon out there at receiver. It's just, he's just one guy that can cross over and it's credit to him because of, of how physical he is and, and the skill set he possesses. We've mentioned the word injuries earlier. Uh, Jamel Jones has had, you know, very promising uh, appearances, but he's also kind of battled the injury bug a bit. Tell me about his progress and, you know, what we can expect from him this coming year. Well, as I said, it's going to be hard for him to beat out tired Tyler because of the experience he has. It doesn't mean he can't, but I, I hope he will have himself positioned from a knowledge standpoint and consistency in performance, which is, I think, uh, where he's, got to improve the most it, it, just at times he does really, really well and looks great. And other times he does some things that, that are not veteran like. And uh, so that consistency is going to be important. And he's certainly uh, from a physical standpoint, capable of, of being our starting quarterback and, and, uh, and doing a great job for us. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited at, at how far he's come from his freshman year, but I don't think, He's, he's hit his ceiling yet. I think he can still improve, and that's really what we're looking for this spring. And he can certainly get that through reps here in the spring and even during practice, yes? That's absolutely right. Reps, reps is the most important thing. Guys, that, you know, I've heard the, the saying, he's a rep guy. I've never coached a player that wasn't a rep guy. I think every one of them have to take reps if they're going to improve and maximize who they can be. So we're getting him, him as much work as, as we possibly can. Uh, you mentioned Terry Rafferty, the local kid, uh, in your first press conference. Um, Tyler, uh, Tyler Rafferty. I'm sorry, Tyler. Yeah, uh, how's he coming along? He's doing great. Um, tough, physical, aggressive. Runs really well. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's fun to see a local guy like that doing a good job, and and we'll we'll see how it all shakes out over the course of the spring. He's got some veteran players in front of him, but. Uh, certainly think if uh, if it's not um, an every down situation this year that eventually he's going to be a guy that can 
can help us and, and play a lot of football for us. Sure. And then lastly, can you give us a, an update on the punting and kicking game? Um, I think we're in a really good place. Uh, you know, losing Zach Harding is a, uh, it's a big loss. He's a great player at his position. Um, but Billy Belkey, who, who kind of is in, in the lead right now and Matthew Rhodes, who's a freshman going to be a sophomore. Both of those guys have good legs and, and uh, Matthew is built very much like Zach, very long levers. He's tall. Uh, Billy's not built the same, and he doesn't need to be, but he's got a really good leg and excited about those guys. Cole Talley, Quinn Moretzky at the top of uh, the kicking chart, but Trey Granati, who's a freshman, going to be a sophomore. Uh, really, really excited about him and, and, uh, and the things he's been doing this spring. So um, I, th th those two units we feel good about. Uh, and those two positions, I should say. And then we've got two senior uh, long snappers that, that are leading the way, Ryan Aguilar and Pat Sesniak. And, uh, you know, those guys, have, they've played a lot of football for us. Thanks, Jeff. Sal? Hey, Coach, can you talk about any of the younger freshmen that might be stepping up uh, in the spring, uh, maybe some defensive backs possibly? Oh, let's see. Um, young guys who are stepping up in the secondary. Uh, Dalen Smith, I don't know if he's a young guy anymore. He's going to be a junior. He's really improving. I, I, we've seen some good things from him. And Coach Dixon has, has mentioned uh, that, that he's been impressed with, with Dalen. So I'm excited about that. He's a really strong player, one of our strongest pound-for-pound -pound players. Um, and so hopefully he can come along and provide some depth for us and play special teams. Um, let's see, we're, we're uh, I'll go position by position, try to think through Calvin Crummy at inside linebacker. I think he's got a chance to be a really good player. We'll see how he, how he improves this spring and develops over the summer, but he's, he's not a rookie anymore. He's going to be a sophomore. And that's when Eric Smith started you know, started his first games when Cole Christensen started his first games and uh, Andrew King started his first games. So there's been some linebackers that have stepped up after their freshman year. Hopefully he's going to be a guy that we can, we can bring along and, and he can help us. Um, it's been uh, some defensive linemen, Kyle Lewis, who's a freshman played at our prep school, uh, excited about him. Um, Hoping Andre Miller will come along. He said had a, a few injury issues this spring, and if we can get him healthy, really give us a chance to kind of see him come along. We we talked about Tyler, and uh, you know a guy that uh, I've been really impressed with is Jimmy Charlo. So Jimmy's going to be a junior, and he's going to be taking the place of Malcolm Morrison at the Apache position, the the, the outside linebacker nickel position, and. Uh, I've been really happy with him. He's he's really serious about football and and uh, has has really uh, stepped up as a leader, more vocal. It's fun to see a guy grow up like that and uh, and and come around. So uh, Max D. Domenico, who was a freshman last year and played some at uh, at safety, it, just having that experience as a freshman. He's a true freshman, so going in his true sophomore year. And, uh, and then Aaron Bibbins, who sat out all last year and really want to see him come along. He's got a great skill set, uh, quick and fast and, and explosive, and just want to see him come along and, and start to make some plays. And then on the offensive side of the ball, um, we're, we're, we're cycling through a lot of young guys on the offensive line, but Jackson Filipowicz at center, Aiden Gaines at, at guard, Aiden's a year, year ahead of him. Jackson's a a, uh, a guy that was a state championship wrestler and uh, just doing a really good job at center. Aiden's having a good camp. Uh, we moved Buckingham and Dellinger from tight end to tackle. Now they did that last year during the season. Buckingham was hurt, but both of those guys, just their, their body types, big and long, and hopefully we can get them to, to really grow into being, being uh, outstanding players for us. Um, we're looking at a bunch of new guys at tight end. Uh, we got Josh Lingenfelter, who we feel really good about. And we're, we're cycling some, some guys through at tight end to really find 
the right guys that, that fit there. We do use the tight end a good bit, as you, as you know, um, at, uh, at be back, we, we, we've got a lot of freshmen that were on the scout team last year and they're, they're just kind of working their way through the lineup and we've got to sort that thing out. We've got, you know, all the, all the veteran guys at the top and now all these freshmen that we've got to really figure out who are going to be the, the guys that rise up and perhaps are going to have a chance to, to contribute on Saturdays. And, uh, and then at receiver, we're, we're again, working with guys that uh, have some veteran experience like Isaiah and Jakovic and Beche Danyan. Uh, but then there, there are some young players that were on the scout team last year and different body types, you know, a guy like Cam Sure, who's, who's built a lot like Cole Catterbone. And then you got guys like Logan Burks and, and uh, Isaiah Gavin, who are long guys like, uh, like, like Isaiah Alston is. And, and so, you know, it, just figuring that out, but, that's what spring practice is for. And uh, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll all kind of find their place and, and we'll figure out who the guys are going to be that are going to be able to contribute. When you're looking at the fullback position behind Jacoby and Tyson, do you, um, like you say, you got a bunch of freshmen there. Um, is there any idea of possibly moving a guy from another position to fullback to give them a run and give them a look, or are you pretty content with the guy, the veteran guys, and then, watching those young guys work out. We've got it. We've got a good veteran group. Um, we just moved a guy named Bo Kite yesterday. So he was a high school quarterback. Uh, we tried to play him at linebacker this fall. He's on the scout team. I think he felt a little out of place. So we put him over at tight end and he practiced at tight end the first five practices of the spring. And it's it just not natural for him uh, being a high school quarterback. He's a very physical guy. Um, was a was a champion wrestler in high school, so very very physical player, and we put him at running back yesterday, and and he just looked a lot better. So I'm excited to kind of see him over the next couple of weeks, and uh, and 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 how he can come along going into that spring game, and and really find out uh, if he may be a guy that perhaps can help us. He's just his build, his body type, the way he runs. I think he's going to be a good special teams player. We just got to find a home for him on offense or defense or wherever it is. So uh, there's, there's plenty of guys there. We just, we got to figure out which ones are the right ones. We, we've got a couple guys with injuries. Uh, Lucky Brooks is out and Jarrell Dixon. They're both out this spring. I wish they could practice this spring. We'd like to give them a lot of work, but we'll have to figure that out in the, in the fall when we get back to camp. Thanks. Uh, Kim McMillan. Um, uh, Jeff, just to, just in a big picture sense, you've just gone over a lot of individual stuff, but in big picture sense, how's camp going along? Are you satisfied? And are you, are you a person that says, you know, hey, we're only two weeks in, or are you a person that says, oh, my God, we only get two weeks left? <laughs> well, I, uh, I, I never think we've got enough time, and I'm never going to feel like we're probably where we, we want to be. Um, Maybe we are where we should be at this point, but but we've got a lot of work to do, and we lost some some good senior players that need to be replaced, some veteran leadership that uh, guys need to step up. So we're continuously working on that. But you know, it it, it uh, I I think I just always have a sense of urgency about trying to get better, and uh, and feeling like we've got to maximize every day that we have. So I don't know that that's any different and. And probably if you came out and watched this practice and and uh, watched our guys run around and the way our coaches are, are are pushing our guys and the way I'm pushing everybody out there that you know we do have a sense of urgency. So hopefully uh, hopefully when we get to April 22nd we'll feel like we've improved. And what is the significance of this week's scrimmage? Um, it, do you really need to see some uh, individual or unit progression? It's the first time we, we are able to dedicate an entire practice to live full contact. And we're limited to three of those in the spring, this being the first, next Saturday being the second in the spring game. So um, I'm just anxious to see our guys get out there on the field without coaches. Or, you know, we'll do special teams and we'll do uh, offense and defense and get guys a, a chance to be evaluated and really 
and really get to see guys play and uh, and who not just learns their assignments, but when uh, when they've got a chance to block somebody or defeat a block or tackle somebody or make a play in the open field, who can do it? And uh, and I'm I'm excited about that. So really, just the 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 hope is that we get an evaluation and get closer to to making some decisions about who who really needs the most reps uh, with the ones and and who are the guys at the bottom and and those in between. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Ken Tracer. Hey, Coach. I just wanted to ask you a little bit more about the inside linebacker spot replacing Eric Smith, such a special player. Come on to Yao from last year's team. Uh, we've talked a little bit with Leo Levin and uh, Brent Jareno was a backup uh, a second team last year. How do you, how is that process going uh, on inside linebacker? Well, like a lot of positions where you lose a really good player, uh, you'd love to have another guy waiting in the wings that's just as good and just as productive. And uh, I, I think we've got some good players there. I don't know if they'll be Eric Smith or John Radigan or Cole Christensen or or uh, Andrew King or guys like that. We'll see. I, I think we've got some guys with, with a lot of potential and and uh, have a chance to be really good players. So um, we we didn't know that all those guys would be as productive as they were when they were freshmen either, and and even sophomores for some of them. So you know, John Radigan waited three years to become a starter. He started as a senior, now he's playing in the NFL. So he's he's also played behind a guy that's in the NFL and alongside another one, Eric Smith, it's, I think maybe got a chance to play in the NFL. So I hope, I hope he'll get a chance. So there, there's some guys coming along and, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious myself to just see how that shakes out and who rises to the top. Coach, you just mentioned some outstanding players in recent Army football history now in the NFL. Was there something special about when you recruited them that you saw, or is it something that they really developed when they got to West Point? I think uh, I think we recruit most of our guys really in the same philosophy that this this academy. Uh, you know, this academy is a it has a philosophy that we are a developmental model for leadership. Um, you know, th this school doesn't go and get a thousand new world leaders uh, as 18 year olds. They don't come here as uh, people that are completely developed as leaders and don't need any, uh, they don't need any guidance. They don't need any help getting and maximizing who they can be as leaders. They, they, that's why we have them for 47 months here. And then we turn out people who were who are much better leaders than when they got here. But second lieutenants aren't generals yet. They're not ready to be generals. So the guys that we recruit, we're not recruiting five-star guys, four-star guys. We, we can't go sign them. We can't go head to head and beat them, beat other people on four and five star prospects on a regular basis. We try to go recruit really good football players that we think are a fit, <clears throat> excuse me, a fit for our system. They're tough. They're smart, they care about football, and they're unselfish. We're, we're hoping we find guys like that because those guys will be humble and they'll want to learn and they'll have a, a, a desire to get better and to maximize who they can be. And that's the story with every one of those guys I mentioned. They, they, they didn't have uh, 14 Power 5 offers. They were good high school players, and we saw something in them that – was appealing to us and and we recruited them and thankfully they came to school here and they were able to develop and get better and, and much of that credit is to them and the hard work and the effort that they put in but uh but also to the to the staff we have here the coaches and the strength staff and the trainers and and our our, our developmental folks that that work with our players every day to help maximize who they can be thanks coach Last question, or is everyone good? Have a great afternoon, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Coach. You got it, Pete Navy. Care.